Hey guys, Martin here. It's been some time since the last video I posted and you're probably wondering what that's about. I don't want to dwell on it too much, but to explain, late last year my father, David Edward Billany, passed away very suddenly, and as a result I had to go back home to England to be with my family for a time. I was in the middle of editing this video when I received the news, so it became rather difficult for me to sit down with it again, and I've had to reapproach it a few times. To make matters worse, a sewage pipe overflowed and our home was flooded and the damage wasn't fixed for a few months, so I apologize sincerely for the delay, and I hope you understand. I don't want to spend too much time on introductions or explanations of the premise. Uh, suffice to say, this is a series where I watch the Yu-Gi-Oh! spin-off series Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and give running commentary on it. Sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's just anti-Bastion Misawa propaganda. I don't know why, but I have a feeling today's video is going to be more of the latter than the former. So without further ado, please open your textbooks and turn to episode 36, Dual Distractions Part 1. The episode starts with Bastion standing on a cliff doing stretches. He does like two side stretches and then decides he's done. Yeah, that'll do it. It's okay, he compensates for all the other stretches he could do by stretching my patience at all times. 24-7. Oh no, I said numbers, now he's gonna get all excited. We zoom in and we see that he's sweating from all that working out he just did. Rigorous stuff, I think you'll agree. Bastion thinks to himself, ever since that duel with Camula, it's been eerily quiet. Too quiet. Did you miss the whole scenario where the school almost got bulldozed by the Princeton brothers and replaced with a blockbuster video? Did you miss that, Bastion? Did you, did you miss it? He worries that with two of the seven spirit gates opened, it's only a matter of time before he may have to face a Shadow Rider in a duel, and he must be prepared. I'd better do what Jaden always says and prepare to have my game henceforth be onwards. Mmm, Bastion catchphrase. Bastion flashes his deck at the audience, noting that it's a good thing he's well equipped. Mmm. Bastion, Bastion, six foot eight weighs a fucking ton. Opponents beware, opponents beware. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. I heard that motherfucker had like six goddamn decks. Bastion looks through his cringe ass deck full of fetishy cards and finds the fetishiest of them all. F fetishiest. Most fetishy. Bastion blushes and asks aloud, Where on earth did this card come from? Probably the same alien world that your attempt at a natural line read came from. Bastion follows up with, Silly distraction. Well, nothing distracts me. Heaven forbid I be distracted from looking at water. Now I'm gonna do one single push-up and then I'm gonna go back to my dorm and finish all the homework that I already did in my brain the moment it was given to me. Speaking of things to distract us from bloody Bastion, we get the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX opening theme. Do you reckon Bastion takes issue with the theme lyrics back at class they never taught us this? Because I mean of course they taught you this, you just weren't paying attention, you simpleton. And the schoolyard isn't for chilling out with the crew, it's for studying quietly by yourself. Theme song's a load of codswallop. At the Slifer Red Dorm, Bastion wakes Jaden and the other supporting characters who will be forgotten in a season or two by making a holographic robot dinosaur fire a f***ing cannon at them. This is only the second most f***ed up method of waking someone I've seen in an anime. First place goes to Rally Vincent waking up Bean Bandit by putting a hot frying pan on his face. I'd still rather take the frying pan because it would mean waking up to Rally Vincent and not Bastion. The gang no-sells Bastion's unhinged behavior and join him for some daybreak duel exercises, which apparently involves standing outside and dramatically drawing cards from your duel disc. Why am I not surprised that Bastion is the expert at one-handed exercise? Chumley recognizes one of Cyrus's cards. Is that Thunder Nyan Nyan? Yes, Chayomli, it I is. Cyrus explains that he got the card recently and has a crush on her. Then they both make plans to watch Bill Nyan Nyan the Science Guyan Guyan later. Chumley reveals his upsetting card crush is Diane Keto, and rather than censor her cleavage, Four Kids does us all a solid and shows it in gratuitous detail. Ironically, we now all need the effect of this card to gain back the thousand life points we lost by looking at it. Bastion yells at the group for discussing which trading cards they want to bang. Training, gentlemen, does not comprise of standing around and talking about birds. Hey Bastion, quick question. What was your favorite Alfred Hitchcock movie? Birds. And what was Yami Yugi attacked by on his ill-advised date with Taya? Birds. And what are your primary targets in the video game Duck Hunt? Birds. Okay, good. Glad we're on the same page. Bastion insists he doesn't have a card crush, but then thinks about some pink-haired moe blob thing and gets all blushy. See, this is why I never wanted to see inside Bastion's head. There's more problematic content in there than in Bastion's own big 
big book of math problems he keeps under his pillow in case of emergencies. Cyrus just admits he's gonna go fap to trading cards. But I do have plans to play solitaire with Thunder Nyan Nyan in about 15. Yeah, he's gonna jai is all over her. Back at class, Professor Banner strokes Pharaoh the cat and remarks on how many absences there are. Bruh. It's possible they've all been put off by my constantly leaving hairballs in their seats. And in their textbooks. And in their dual discs. Jaden thinks he has a winged Karibo, but joke's on him. Just one of my hairballs. Meow. Banner surmises. Must be a bug going around. None that I've heard of. And I'm the number one source for bug-related information. Me, Bastion the bug-loving bastard. Poor shithead extraordinaire. A lady comes in carrying a bag and asks the professor. Do you recognize this bag? Yes, it's one of my students. The bag is a student. I mean, I guess it's not the worst pupil you've got. It probably retains more information than Jaden does. Also, what? She found a bag and came straight into Banner's class to be like, do you know this bag? Like, wh what preceded this? Does the school not have a lost and found? Professor Banner brings all the plot-adjacent students into the woods to search for the bag's owner, and all around them you hear the singing of birds. Jaden only tagged along because he heard the term search party, and he thought the emphasis was on party of course. Guy's gonna be so pissed when the only clown there is him. The group comes across a giant coliseum in the middle of nowhere that has seemingly sprouted up overnight. We then see that it's being constructed by the various missing students. Wow, they work fast. Rome wasn't built in a day? Well, apparently they didn't have a few dozen school kids that study children's card games to help out. That guy's from class. You know, the place where they didn't teach us this. But some things you gotta learn hit and miss. Even Crowler's getting in on the action. Crowler? Doing? A man's work? A man's work? My, they must have been running very short on men. Uh, it's a shonen anime, so that seems extremely unlikely. Suddenly, a tiger attacks and eats Jaden, ending the show rather abruptly, but with a satisfying conclusion. Nah, sorry, it, it chases the group in Looney Tunes style fashion, causing Banner to quip. First a Colosseum, then a tiger. What's next? A gladiator? Ironically, Russell Crowe invited all of his friends over to binge watch Yu Gi Oh! GX, and by the time he got to this episode, they'd all checked out, and he had to ask them, Are you not? entertained and then whoa 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 aruga aruga wolf whistle bonking myself on the head with a mallet etc sorry had to get that out of the way a buff amazon lady holds the audience's attention tightly between her thighs and announces that she is one of the seven shadow riders and i've never been so jealous of shadows in my entire life cyrus says oh man you mean a woman Feminist Chumley is not something I was expecting when I put on Yu-Gi-Oh! GX today. Amazons are a warrior race of all females. Unga Bunga enthusiast Chumley is absolutely something I was expecting when I put on Yu-Gi-Oh! GX today. She introduces herself as Tanya, a classic Amazonian name, obviously, and asks which man is going to step up and challenge her. And Jaden, Chaz, and Bastion all request to be metaphorically stepped on. There's a hilarious shot of Banner just staring at the wall behind them, presumably so he has plausible deniability when when Tanya rips them in half with her bare hands. Bizarrely, Tanya chooses Bastion, presumably because he looks like he'd make the most entertaining noise when spanked. And for the record, ooh, I hate that Bastion, but now also, ooh, I envies that Bastion. Bastion flashes his many dual box nipples as part of the classic posh head mating ritual, and Tanya explains, I have the same problem myself. I have two decks. I fail to see the problem. I have two hands. Oh, you said Dex. Sorry, this episode is way too horny, it's getting to me. Bastion chooses to face Tanya's deck of knowledge, and she inserts it seductively into her dual disc. God, it feels like I'm writing fan fiction all over again. But it's not nearly as nice as the choice that I am making for myself. Well, that line reading was certainly a choice. Tanya explains that this isn't a shadow game, and Bastion's soul isn't on the line. I don't want your soul. I want you, big boy. Ironically, hearing her call Bastion that has killed my soul. My tribe's all women, so to marry, I have to shop around. Ah, and you clearly found yourself in the 99 cent store based on your choice of item. The duel begins and Tanya's buff and sexy Amazon cards must contend with Bastion's nerdy math robot things. We also learn that Bastion's monsters have disappointing asses, which obviously reflects what a disappointing ass he is. Tanya is weirdly into Bastion. Oh my, that will suffice. Say it again. It sounded so cool. Yes, nothing says cool quite like 
Bastion. Mmm, thug life, my home slices. Speaking of totally radical shit that Bastion does, he activates his trap card Magnet Force Minus. F***ing Magnet Force Minus. How does it work? It can equip onto one monster. Then, who it's equipped to gains a negative magnetism and becomes what's known as a minus monster. Oh, it turns out that's how it works. And from there, dear, it gets interesting. Does it? Two minus monsters? Well, I'm afraid they're not allowed to engage in battle with each other, but a minus and a plus, if they're out, they must fight. Oh, no, it really doesn't. It really doesn't. Bastion quotes the bard. No, not Will Shakespeare, DJ Scat Cat. You've heard that old quote, opposites attract. Tanya breasts boobily all over Bastion's attempts to thwart her attacks, reducing him to 1,200 life points. But how? That's two times that she's been able to outthink me. A woman outthinking me once is unheard of, but twice? I clearly need to brush up on my attack points quantum mechanics. <laughs> Tanya floats the idea of having kids with Bastion, and he's appalled. Kids? We are enemies! Rivals! Ah, so like most parents then. Bastion is in disbelief at Tanya being so twitterpated, and he cries. You hardly know me! I know enough. My little sugar booger. Don't say bugger to Bastion. It means something entirely different in England. And as far as I know, it does not involve sugar. Bastion is all hot and bothered and can't get the images of all the different card crushes out of his head. And then he reenacts what happened whenever my parents would walk in on me watching Yu-Gi-Oh. No! Get out! I'm above all this! In a desperate attempt to make math seem cool, Bastion does a bunch of sums with his monsters and then brings out... Conduction Warrior Linear Magnum Plus Minus! Oh man, Conduction Warrior Linear Magnum Plus Minus is my favorite flavor of Magnum. Now I'm hungry. Tanya discusses their future plans. It's probably best that you move in with me. You know, after we get married. Oh, we'll just have the coziest home sweet home. Oh. I hope you like all your furniture and personal belongings being covered in the feverish scribblings of an equation-obsessed man who dresses like a formal banana, because that's what you're looking at here. Tanya works her womanly wiles upon the boorish brute Bastion, who begins to find himself quite distracted as a result. Hey Bastion, if you could choose between one Tanya or a hundred thousand of your favorite VTuber, who would you pick? One hundred thousand gals! Tanya summons Amazon S. Tiger, who gets a buff from all the buff Amazon women that I wish were in the buff. So not licious. Remove it from the list? Bastion comes up with an elaborate plan and then accidentally blurts out his favorite dish from Switzerland. I'll use one to eliminate Amazonist Tiger. Then another one to destroy the Amazonist Swordswoman. Then I'll use the remaining one to attack Tanya directly and win. Fun duel. Before Bastion can execute his stratagem, Tanya activates her Amazon S Archer's trap card in order to switch his monster's positions and force them to attack her tiger. It's like that part from Yakuza 2 where Kiryu punches a tiger square in the face. Except instead of Kiryu, it's a custard cream shaped like a human being, and he doesn't win. Chas Chaz ties his Bastion. He walked right into a trap! What was he thinking? Bruh! Of course he wasn't thinking. If he was, he would have thought to fetch me my fancy feast. Anyway, time for my nap. Snore, snore. Meow. Snore, snore. Meow. Bastion's life points drop to zero, but the joke's on Tanya because he's into that sh**. Uh, I'm all yours. Bastion assumes the traditional I just lost a card game position, which happens to also be the same as the please step on me mommy position. So it's a twofer. Bastion's key and what little remains of his dignity disappear, and before Jaden can intervene, Tanya's tiger chases the rest of them out of the Colosseum. Bruh! I insist that you unhand me and allow me to negotiate with my fellow feline. I'm sure they will listen to reason, and failing that I will bat at her with my ineffectual paws. Is here, summer cat. Iron bars prevent Jaden from going back inside, and we hear Tanya calling out, Sorry, Bastion and I are officially on our honeymoon now, so get lost. So wait, does that mean the duel was a wedding ceremony? Can you get married by way of children's card games? Now I'm upset that I didn't get married like that. Could have had the Dark Magician officiate my wedding, and had a bunch of obnoxious Celtic groomsmen. Missed opportunity. And that's the end of the episode.
Funny story, I know you guys are going to expect me to trash this episode or something because it's so Bastion-focused, but I'm going to be real with you. This episode is kind of exactly what I needed. Not just because of all the sexy Amazonian lady content, which is appreciated, but also because it's so off the wall as so much of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX is, it's distracted me from a lot of real-life events. So in a way, this episode is perfectly titled, Dual Distractions Indeed. But yeah, honestly, loath as I am to admit that I enjoyed spending time in Bastion's head, I think one of the genuine strengths of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX is how much time it's willing to give to these side characters. Enjoyable as Jaden is, I'm grateful that we get entire episodes about the Peanut Gallery, even if sometimes their antics get pretty absurd and often kinda pervy. Also, it didn't hurt that we got to look at Tanya for, like, most of the running time. That was also good. I appreciated that. Speaking of appreciation, I want to say, again, a big thank you to all of you for your patience, and also a huge thanks to our pledges over at Patreon, who have supported me so much these last years. You guys rock, and a special do the la 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 goes out to all of you. Alright, tune in next time when we watch Dual Distractions Part 2, where Bastion presumably gets his groove back. Did he ever have a groove to speak of? I don't want to be thinking about Bastion's groove, this is a weird way to end a video. Catch you next time, fellow Attack Point Quantum Mechanics enthusiasts! Well, my birds do like a twist with their water! Your birds? You can't say that! My birds! They like a fruit flavor when they're hydrating! Look! Birds!